Hello all, hello road mappers. Um, popping into our group today. Um, I'm going live on this Monday morning. Say hello if you are joining me live or hashtag replay. I have a story to tell you. So um, of course this is Monday morning and I have, I have a workout to design a uh, part of my live stream series. If you joined the mentorship program, this would be part of what you would get and you get to work out with me. Uh, so this week uh, begins a new workout series. So I have to get to that. However, however, I have a story to tell. Um, all right. So last week, um, you know, I delivered the roadmap to food freedom for you guys. And this event is super fun for me. Um, it is it's exciting, you know, because it's not fluff. I mean, I know it's a free event, but this is the real deal, you guys. Like, this is not more tips and tricks to end your binge eating. Like, that's not what this is. This is, like, the real deal. So as much as I love teaching it and I love sharing it with any woman who rises to the occasion who is ready to hear it, <laughs> I trust that process, um, by the end of the week... I'm like emotionally exhausted. Like um, it, it, it takes a lot out of me, like back to back to back because I don't usually teach that way. Like my modules are spread out and there's space and there's room. So, so anyway, I'm sharing this with you because um, through even what I teach with uh, wi helping women heal their relationship to food is um, part of giving themselves the grace to recover and relax and rest and what are you doing to take care of yourself? So one of the things I do to take care of myself and things that I do for fun is uh, take the motorcycles out. So my husband and I have uh, bikes. I have an SV650. I grew up um, with motorcycles. So my dad is a Harley rider. And if you grew up with bikes, let me know. If you ride, let me know. And let me know what kind of bike you ride. Or if you ride as a passenger on the back of your husband's bike, that would be awesome. Or your partner. <laughs> um, I'd love to know that. So, so anyway, I have really grown to, uh, this is just one of the outlets, right? Like how do you cope with life and how do you deal with stress without using food? Well, one of the things I've learned is that I really enjoy riding. I used to be the passenger for years and it took, um, an opportunity where Steve had, um, now Steve's been riding motorcycles since college and actually he went to Clemson and he, so that was down in South Carolina his main mode of transportation to class was motorcycle <laughs> so he got the best parking uh his he said his professors like didn't give him a hard time if it was raining out I was like that wow <laughs> that's not how my professors were when I went to college but okay but anyway um so he has been riding motorcycles for years but I was always a passenger and Steve is on the, um, he's a fireman and part of the fire department, there was somebody who joined the fire department who had, um, organized this, like this whole course that you could go through for motorcycle training. And Steve's like, Hey, they're extending it to spouses. Do you, do you want, do you want to finally get your motorcycle license? And I was like, you know what? And I was 38. And if, uh, you watched step one of the roadmap to food freedom, I shared that there was this parallel around the time I was getting my motorcycle to about the time that I was really ready to heal my relationship with food. So it was just interesting. Okay, so that was about 10 years ago. Now, fast forward, we were riding yesterday and we went out on, it was a beautiful day. I mean, it was in like the 70s. Um, hey, Kim. Hi, Paulina. Hi, Jana. <laughs> Hi, everyone, by the way. So, um, so we, we took the motorcycles out. We, we planned like, um, maybe like a two hour ride because we wanted to enjoy the afternoon, but then we also wanted to come back and cook some Hello Fresh. Do you see that little recipe right there? So we're like, we're going to cook dinner and, uh, you know, have an early night. So, we took the bikes out and as we're riding, we have intercoms and Steve and I will talk to one another on our intercoms while we ride. And I'm like de-stressing, decompressing from delivering the roadmap. And it's like really enjoying the, the beautiful temperature, everything about it, the windy roads. We're so lucky where we live in New Jersey. 
yeah, if you fly into Newark, that's one glimpse into Jersey. That's not where I live. I live like in the woods and there's a lot of back roads and hills and places to hike. It's beautiful where I live. So we were out riding and I said to him, it popped into my head. I'm trying to remember why it popped into my head. Um, but I was like, I think we're coming up on me riding for 10 years. And I was like, I'm trying to remember. I think, I think it was, it's I think this is the 10th season. So we were talking about when I first got my Buell Blast, the first motorcycle that I was on. So I got really comfortable with that first. Then the second motorcycle I got was uh, the first year this SV650 Suzuki came out was in 1999. So that was my second motorcycle. Um, so it was like, I don't know, 15, 15 years old maybe long, maybe older than that, but it was a great like second bike. Um, what I love about the SV650 is when you, you, you you throttle, when you lay off the throttle, it's like a brake. Um, my husband's motorcycle is not like that. He has, um, a Honda Hornet. It's a 919. And it, when I ride his motorcycle, laying off the throttle does not back off. <laughs> it's still like, so it's a very different experience. So I love my SV650. Now I have a new one. I got it brand new in 2020 or 2021. Anyway, so I'm saying, I'm like, wow, I feel so much more comfortable riding. Like it's like, wow, like I feel like as an operator, like really comfortable riding. Now that's not to say I'm not paying, like I, what I love about riding, the other thing is it shifts me into like almost like a mindful meditation kind of state. Yes, we're talking, but I'm constantly scanning, constantly, constantly scanning. It, it forces me to be very present and that's a really good practice in life. And it makes me an even better driver when I'm in my car, in my Jeep. So, um, so we're riding and we pull into a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot because we, he was like mapping it out of like, all right, well, we want to take this route. We're going to ride by Lake Apakong, but I want to stop here and I want to do the back road. So GPS is taking us here. Then I'll drop that. We'll reset it. And then we'll ride home from there, taking this other route. So we stop into Dunkin' Donuts and we're in the back parking lot and he resets it. We get off the bike, stretch our legs, you know, Heine gets sore. We have, we have like, you know, street bikes there. It's not like cruise bikes. <laughs> he wants adventure bikes, but I'm like, we need a bigger garage, babe. Like let's, yeah, one thing at a time. So anyway, so we're, um, reset. We're about to leave and we pull up to the end of the Dunkin' Donuts exit, like where you're going to get out onto the road. And something happened so quickly. I could not figure out in the moment what the fuck was happening. But it felt like my throttle was pinned. I was trying to pull the brake and the clutch in at the same time, but my bike was kicking out from under me. And it was like, what the fuck is happening? But I couldn't, I knew enough in the moment, I didn't want to get launched out into traffic. So I, I think as it, I'm, it, again, it happened so freaking fast. I think it kicked out from under me. It, I ended up putting it down and I put it down on top of my foot. Like I, I have proper riding gear. So this is the other thing. I am tying all this back to your food freedom, by the way. There is a reason for this story and I want to share the whole big connection. So stay with me. So I, I put my bike down and weirdly enough, like I think because I had also was trying to use my foot brake. So with my foot brake, my, I have riding boots. I have proper gear. We always, you, you dress for the glide, not the ride, <laughs> you know, or dress for the slide, not the ride, as they say. So I have my proper motorcycle gear. I got my tall leather boots. Thank God I've got the proper boots because if I was wearing sneakers, my foot would have been fucked. So it propped on top of my heel and my toes were like jammed. So I'm like, I'll show I'm in bare feet, but I'll show you. So I'm like, it was like my bike was pushed up against the top of my heel and jammed down. But it was enough for me to swing my other leg off. And I got out from underneath and I was like, okay, all right, I can move my I can move my foot. I'm all right, I'm all right. Now, Steve, of course, he's right next to me, and his wife just put his bike down, <laughs> put her bike down. What the fuck was happening? And in the intercoms, it's like he hears the throttles pinned open. He's like, he's like, um, he's like, kill the switch, kill the switch. So I, sw I hit the switch, 
my bike shut off. He comes around and he's like, okay, you're right, you're right. You know, we're all like assessing it. It's getting me a little emotional because <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay. So we like picked the bike back up and it was like, all right, what the hell happened there? And I couldn't think about in the moment exactly what happened. I had to like, he was like, explain to me, explain to me how this happened. <laughs> I'm like, I, I want, I want to, I don't, I don't know how it happened so fast. It happened so fucking fast. All I know is I was trying to pu pull the clutch and the brake in together, which would get the bike to stop. Why wasn't it stopping? Why did it feel like the throttle was pinned? Did it get caught on my glove? I'm not sure. So we put the bike up. He's like, I don't fucking care. Let the cars drive around. It doesn't, let's just make sure you're all right. Let's assess you're okay. Let's assess the bike. Okay. Minimal damage. The little, my, the end of my brake, my brake broke off, but I could still use my brake. Um, a few little scrapes. I was like, okay. The mirror got shoved in. All right. We're okay. We're okay. Do you know, I recovered from that really fucking fast. There was not any part of me that was like, I'm afraid to ride. Um, I'm ooh, like, it, it jolted me a little bit, but I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I literally got back up, got back on my bike and we took off. So what's interesting to me, so we're riding and he's like, um, so you, do you, you do get the irony in this, right? I literally just said to him like 10 minutes earlier, I feel really comfortable on my bike. Like, cause the, I put my bike down one other time. It was early, early on. And it was, that was because we got caught in the rain and where we had lived previously, there was no, um, we didn't have a garage or a shed. And as I was pulling my bike into the backyard and try the, the rain, everything was slippery. So as I had to typically when I was dry, I just like, Vroom, and just got my bike up over this curb and we parked it in our back patio. Everything was moss and slippery. So it slid out from underneath me. So that was like fine. And I recovered and it was fine. And we were laughing about it. Um, but this was a, like, so I haven't knock on wood, nothing, 10 years and not like nothing. And then it happens on the 10 minutes after I'm like, I'm really comfortable riding. It's not that I was getting complacent. I think it's that there was a, like, you know, the saying, you, you know, a good pilot in the stormy weather, you know, the good captain in the stormy weather. So this was showing and reflecting to me back to myself, you are a fucking good rider because do you see how quickly I recovered and I was able to get back on my bike, assess the situation. I'm okay. I can move my ankle. I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. I was totally fine to ride. They did not ding my confidence, nothing. But here's the other thing that happened. After I was riding, I started putting pieces together. Then I was like, and I was talking it through with Steve and he's like, do you think, do you think what happened was you just tried to shift with your foot and you didn't pull, pull the clutch in. And because you were shifting, it launched your bike forward. And I was like, yeah, that, that could be what happened. So the reason I want to share this with you is because my mentorship program is so such a huge part of my life. And it's so much more than just like, oh, this thing I do. It's so integrated in my life. And when my clients work with me, this is the kind of thing that we work through together. What is happening in your everyday life that seemingly has nothing to do with food, but you can draw a parallel to help you understand. So, um, so when you have a binge eating episode or you have some sort of compulsivity with addiction and with food, so one of the things that we're working on is how do I become more resilient when that happens? Because I am not here to lie to you. You will have binge eating episodes. You will have emotional eating episodes. These things are going to happen. However, like when Steve helped me put my bike back up, he did not make fun of me. He didn't, of course he's my, he's my husband, but I'm, what I'm saying is I felt completely safe to recover from that and to not feel bad about it and to understand what the fuck I did. Because, yeah, putting your bike down and having people drive around you is fucking embarrassing. Like, it's 
you know, it could be embarrassing. So there could be layers of shame and especially if like you're some big badass rider or something. But I didn't have any of that because I had someone in my life who creates a very safe space for me to be able to explore that stuff without feeling bad about it. That was like, listen, like we all do it. Let's just, are you okay? Like, and then later we can laugh about it. So what I provide for my clients is this ability of resilience of life is going to happen and you may have, it's fewer and farther between. And when you're in the binge eating episode, you're in the compulsive eating, you're in the mindless snacking, it can be very difficult to separate and be aware. But what you can do is afterwards assess the situation in a non-judgmental way. And, and if you go through the roadmap and you get to step five, I talk about the importance of judgment. So I'm able to assess and take a look at it and recover and move the fuck on with my life. That's what we will, Manny and I and the other ladies in the collective will help you do in your life. It's a, this is why it's a year program. It's why it's because you have, you have to, it, you're living your life now. Like it's unrealistic to say like, I'm going to take a 12 week, you know, program to heal my relationship with food and lose weight. And then you have like the rest of the seasons of the year in your life and the chapters and the things you're uncovering and discovering about yourself six months after the program ends. How is that being of service to you? or to any woman on the planet. It's, I, it doesn't even feel right to me. Like that's not even how it works. I wanna let you into the secret of how it actually works. And we need those space to uncover and reveal and you, need, you want the space to feel comfortable and safe. And like, we need that to heal ourselves. And if we are constantly putting ourselves in a position that we're judged and then condemned and you shut down and you're not able to look at your behavior and like assess it to recover and get resilient about it, you'll be stuck. You'll be stuck in the trauma and the wound. And we talk about that in step three. So, um, so yeah, I'm okay. (laughs) Got some scrapes on my bike. My ankles feel a little, I don't know. I was like, not, not enough to ice it. I'm like, okay, so the workout I'm designing today, we might be doing lunges. And I'm like, well, they'll be doing lunges. I'll be doing maybe something else. Um, but that's the other thing. Just side note, if you do decide to work out with me, there's always, that's the other thing. What can you do? Can we modify? Can we do something else? Can we do, what, what serves your body today? That's what's most important. So that's my story about putting my bike down. <laughs> And my reflection of what happened, the assessment, the recovery, like, holy shit, did that show me that I am a good rider because of how I was able to quickly shut the kill switch, get out from under the bike, not know enough to not get it out, put it out in traffic, um, all in within seconds. Like, that was pretty incredible. So, um, so you will be put to the test if that's how you want to say it. So the roadmap, you may feel like elated, like, Oh, I got this. What's going to happen two weeks from now, three weeks from now, when you're like, Oh, fuck, I'm in this binge eating episode again. And what the fuck just happened? I don't even understand it. Who's there to support you in a very non judgmental, helpful way at that time. I want that for you. You deserve that. You deserve to have that. Uh, I think every woman deserves to have that. So I'm offering it to you and it's called the MindFit Mentorship. And I believe it's part of why I'm here on this planet. And same with Mandy. (laughs) She and I were talking about how important we believe this work is. It's not really about the food, you guys. It's not really about the food. We make it about the food, but if we can learn about our connection with the food behavior, about the parallels of other things in our life, then we're really getting somewhere then the healing really happens. So, all right. So that's it. That's your little um, Dana Lee chat from her kitchen table, (laughs) from my home to yours, from my heart to yours, and um, putting my bike down and getting the fuck back up and moving on. (laughs) Okay. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And um, I really hope to see you in the mentorship.